So we use this idea of spectroscopy. It's kind of a method to study different elements and composition of different materials. Hmm, I throw this inside some kind of machine. I see what color comes out, all the wavelength. Oh, I can tell what energy levels they are. Okay, sure. And I can tell what el what element this is based on the emitted wavelengths. Because each, like I say, each line, each spectra or set of lines are specific for that particular wavelength. So which also means some people can use this to study very distant stars far away in the galaxy. And then we can do that with a Doppler shift. So maybe in stationary lab, we expect the spectra to look like this. This is the absorption spectra. But then when the object is moving towards or away from you, it could be either red shifted. So red shift is moving away from you. Oh, remember this from AS? A thing moving away from you. Or blue shifted, which means the object or the star or the whatever is moving towards you. So you can use this to study stars and you decide, is this star coming towards me or away from me? Well, why we call it redshift? Because you see the lines. Oh, this black line is supposed to be here, but it has now moved towards the red-ish zone already. So that's why we call it a redshift. Same for all these lines. This one's supposed to be here, but move a bit towards the red. Redshift. So by seeing how the spectra has changed, it's like, hmm, expectation versus reality. For blue shift, it's the other way. This line is supposed to be here. But now it has moved a little bit towards the blue side of the spectrum. And if you look for this line, in the lab, if the object is not moving relative to you, it should be here in a certain wavelength. But when you study the star, eh, it has shifted a little bit towards the blue. So it means hmm, this star is moving hmm, towards me. So the wavelengths are getting squashed. So that's one use of spectroscopy in Doppler shift studying the universe. Speaking of the universe, ooh, I need to tell you something dangerous before we end this video. Hang in there, we're almost there. So the sun oh, is actually quite a dangerous thing to have close to Earth. Because you look at all this stuff here, oh, the sun oh, emits all kinds of wavelengths at you. It's quite dangerous, especially x-rays, UV to some extent. So a sun, how do I draw a sun? Ah, solar sun. Okay, sun is throwing all these wavelengths at us. But thankfully, we have a layer of protection. This layer we call our precious atmosphere. So what does this atmosphere do? Atmosphere is full of what? Well, miss. Atmosphere is air. Lah. Okay, okay. Air, gas. Okay, there's a certain type of gas or many types of gas in our air. So what happens is this air will protect us from the sun's harmful radiation. So if you look at this graph, the yellow color one is a solar energy at top of the atmosphere. So what the sun is throwing at Earth. But then what actually reaches us is the orange color or pink color section. So you see a lot of the things are already missing. The atmosphere has absorbed quite a lot of uh, different, different wavelengths. For example, water, H2O. You see all this missing part? Where did all this yellow thing go? Gone. Absorbed by water. H2O, CO2, all this all gone. But the one dangerous thing that I need to warn you about is this part, the UV part. Warning, warning, danger sign. Now, this UV spectrum is absorbed by this gas in the atmosphere called O3, also known as ozone. The ozone layer. And if our ozone layer is going to be gone, then there will be a lot more UV rays coming in. Right now you see, oh, the sun is throwing in quite a lot of UV, but it absorbs a lot and only a little bit, just a little bit reaches us on Earth. So if UV is too much, we're going to get some skin cancer, lots of trouble, but thank the atmosphere that they absorb certain wavelengths that the sun is throwing at us. Okay, so if you're a spaceman, you got to wear some suits to protect yourself from the sun's harmful radiations. But that's all for today. Uh, dive into all these energy levels, absorption, excite, de-excite. So if you're currently an electron, please go and de-excite yourself or excite yourself. Get ready, grind some examples. I'll see you in the examples video on energy.